First question for Vice President Nixon. Thank you, Quincy. Mr. Vice President, Senator Fulbright, and now tonight, Senator Kennedy, maintain that the administration is suppressing a report by the United States Information Agency that shows a decline in United States prestige overseas. Are you aware of such a report? And if you are aware of the existence of such a report, should not that report, because of the great importance this issue has been given in this campaign, be released to the public? Mr. Cronkite, I naturally am aware of it because I, of course, pay attention to everything Senator Kennedy says, as well as Senator Fulbright. Now, in this connection, I want to point out that the facts simply aren't as stated. First of all, the report to which Senator Kennedy refers is one that was made many, many months ago and related particularly to the period immediately after Sputnik. Second, as far as this report is concerned, I would have no objection to having it made public. Third, I would say this with regard to this report, with regard to Gallup polls of prestige abroad and everything else that we've been hearing about, what about American prestige abroad? America's prestige abroad will be just as high as the spokesman for America allow it to be. Now, when we have a presidential candidate, for example, Senator Kennedy, stating over and over again that the United States is second in space, and the fact of the matter is that the space score today is 28 to 8. We've had 28 successful shots. They've had 8. When he states that we're second in education, and I have seen Soviet education, and I've seen ours, and we're not, that we're second in science because they may be ahead in one area or another, when overall we're way ahead of the Soviet Union and all other countries in science. When he says, as he did in January of this year, that we have the worst slums, that we have the most crowded schools, when he says that 17 million people go to bed hungry every night, when he makes statements like this, what does this do to American prestige? Well, it can only have the effect, certainly, of reducing it. Let me make one thing clear. Senator Kennedy has a responsibility to criticize those things that are wrong, but he has also a responsibility to be right in his criticism. Every one of these items that I've mentioned, he's been wrong, dead wrong. And for that reason, he has contributed to any lack of prestige. Finally, let me say this. As far as prestige is concerned, the first place it would show up would be in the United Nations. Now, Senator Kennedy has referred to the vote on communist China. Let's look at the vote on Hungary. There we got more votes for condemning Hungary and looking into that situation than we got the last year. Let's look at the reaction, reaction to Khrushchev and Eisenhower at the last UN session. Did Khrushchev gain because he took his shoe off and pounded the table and shouted and insulted? Not at all. The president gained, America gained, by continuing the dignity, the decency that has characterized us, and it's that that keeps the prestige of America up, not running down America the way Senator Kennedy's been running her down. Comment, Senator Kennedy? I really don't need uh, Mr. Nixon to tell me about what my responsibilities are as a citizen. I've served this country for 14 years in the Congress and before that in the service. I have just as high a devotion, just as high an opinion. What I downgrade, Mr. Nixon, is the leadership the country's getting, not the country. Now, I didn't make most of the statements that you said I made. I believe the Soviet Union is first in outer space. We may have made more shots, but the size of their rocket thrust and all the rest. You yourself said to Khrushchev, you may be ahead of us in rocket thrust, but we're ahead of you in color television, in your famous discussion in the kitchen. I think that color television is not as important as rocket thrust. Secondly, I didn't say we had the worst slums in the world. I said we had too many slums, and that they are bad, and we ought to do something about them, and we ought to support housing legislation, which this administration is opposed. I didn't say we had the worst education in the world. What I said was that 10 years ago, we were producing twice as many scientists and engineers as the Soviet Union, and today they're producing twice as many as we are and that this affects our security around the world. And fourth, I believe that the polls and other studies and votes in the United Nations and anyone reading the paper and any citizen of the United States must come to the conclusion that the United States no longer carries the same image of a vital society on the move with its brightest days ahead as it carried a decade or two decades ago. Part of that is because we've stood still here at home, because we haven't met our problems in the United States, because we haven't had a moving economy. Part of that as the Gallup poll showed, is because the Soviet Union made a breakthrough in outer space. Mr. George Allen, head of your information service, has said that that made the people of the world begin to wonder whether we were first in science. We're first in other areas of science, but in space, which is the new science, we're not first. John Chancellor's question for Vice President <clears throat> Nixon. Sir, I'd like to ask you a 
another question about Kamoy and Matsu. Both you and Senator Kennedy say you agree with the President on this subject and with our treaty obligations. But the subject remains in the campaign as an issue. Now, is, sir, is this because each of you feels obliged to respond to the other when he talks about Kamoy and Matsu? And if that's true, do you think an end should be called to this discussion, or will it stay with us as a campaign issue? I would say that the issue will stay with us as a campaign issue just as long as Senator Kennedy persists in what I think is a fundamental error. He says he supports the president's position. He says that he voted for the resolution. Well, just let me point this out. He voted for the resolution in 1955, which gave the president the power to use the forces of the United States to defend Formosa and the offshore islands. But he also voted then for an amendment, which was lost, fortunately, an amendment which would have drawn a line and left out those islands and denied the right to the president to defend those islands if he thought that it was an attack on Formosa. He repeated that error in 1959 in a speech that he made. He repeated it again in a television debate that we had. Now, my point is this. Senator Kennedy has got to be consistent here. Either he's for the president and he's against the position that those who opposed the president in 55 and 59 and the senator's position itself stated the other day in our debate, either he is for the president and against that position or we simply have a disagreement here that must continue to be debated. Now, if the senator in his answer to this question will say, I now will depart or retract my previous views. I think I was wrong in 1955. I think I was wrong in 1959. And I think I was wrong in our television debate to say that we should draw a line leaving out Kimoy and Matsu, draw a line in effect abandoning these islands to the communists, then this will be right out of the campaign because there will be no issue between us. I support the president's position. I have always opposed drawing a line. I have opposed drawing a line because I know that the moment you draw a line, that is an encouragement for the communists to attack, to step up their blackmail and to force you into the war that none of us want. And so I would hope that Senator Kennedy in his answer today would clear it up. It isn't enough for him to say, I support the president's position, that I voted for the resolution. Of course he voted for the resolution. It was virtually unanimous. But the point is, what about his error in voting for the amendment, which was not adopted, and then persisting in it in 59, persisting in it into the debate? It's very simple for him to clear it up. He can say now that he no longer believes that a line should be drawn, leaving these islands out of the perimeter of defense. If he says that, this issue will not be discussed in the campaign. Senator Kennedy, your comment? Well, Mr. Nixon, to go back to 1955, the uh, resolution commits the president in the United States, which I supported, to defend uh, Formosa, the Pescadores, and if it was his military judgment, these islands. Then the president sent a mission composed of Admiral Radford and Mr. Robinson to persuade Chiang Kai-shek in the spring of 55 to withdraw from the two islands because they were exposed. The president was unsuccessful. Chiang Kai-shek would not withdraw. I referred to the fact that in 1958, as a member of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, I'm very familiar with the position that the United States took in negotiating with the Chinese communists on these two islands. General Twining, in January 59, described the position of the United States. The position of the United States has been that this build-up, in the words of the President, has been foolish. Mr. Herder has said these islands are indefensible. Chiang Kai-shek will not withdraw. Because he will not withdraw, because he's committed to these islands, because we've been unable to persuade him to withdraw, we are in a very difficult position. And therefore, the President's judgment has been that we should defend the islands if in his military judgment and the judgment of the commander in the field, the attack on these islands should be part of an overall attack on Formosa. I support that in view of the difficulties we've had with the islands, in view of the difficulties and disputes we've had with Chiang Kai-shek. That's the only position we can take. That's not the position you took, however. The first position you took when this matter first came up was that we should draw the line and commit ourselves as a matter of principle to defend these islands, not as part of the defense of Formosa and the Pescadores. You showed no recognition of the administration program to try to persuade Chiang Kai-shek for the last five years to withdraw from the island. And I challenge you tonight to deny that the administration has sent at least several missions to persuade Chiang Kai-shek to withdraw from these islands. And Under that the is the testimony of uh, General Twining and the Assistant Secretary of State in 58. Under the agreed